Minecraft 1.20 introduced so many new blocks into the game, so I tried to count them all. And at this point, there are almost as many blocks as there are Pokemon, and I want to catch them all. Which is why today, I'm going to attempt to collect every single block in Minecraft in 24 hours. That's right, I'm playing Minecraft for 24 hours straight without sleeping or taking breaks. <laughs> I decided to do this challenge with my good friend Wamba, who has much more experience with normal terrain generation. Hello, Mog. Okay, 24 hour timer, starting now. Okay. All right. All right. We only have 83,609. Wait, no. I don't know. <laughs> We're, our, our seconds are ticking. <laughs> He's also just fun to hang out with. Neither of us are very good speedrunners, so we started formulating a plan of attack while we ran through the early stages of the game. Yo, I just realized there's a village over here. Shall we go boating together? Yeah. I love your cape. Minecon 2013, baby, Orlando. I gotta be honest, I knew going into this challenge that it was gonna be rough, but I think Wombo was only now realizing it. Oh! Whoa, dude! Okay, well, so much for playing this in hardcore. I, that was a you thing, always. What an L. All right, so we probably want, like, iron armor. Yeah, let's head into the mines, dude. I'm already up to uh, over 20 iron, and I see loads more. I just want to say we are officially 1% done with the challenge. This is gonna be a breeze, this whole challenge. Yeah, this is gonna be fine. Totally not already struggling. I mainly play on my super flat world, so I was pretty dazzled by stuff like the raw iron and the deep slate blocks, which I've never really encountered before. I have never seen a cave this big in, in my entire Minecraft career. Well, I mean, you've only seen three layers of dirt. With the wind fully taken out of my sails, only one thing could help. Yo, diamond. Nice. Ooh. We quickly got everything we needed from caving, except for a lava pool to help us build a nether portal. So we decided to go up to the surface to search for one instead. And we both put on some music. DJ Smokey Shadow Wizard Money Gang. While Wamba explored the desert temples in the desert village for loot, I was organizing things back at the base. Two temples, two temples, yo. And a jungle. Holy cow, dude, this is a good seed. All right, I got all the TNT, so. I really don't know if we'll use that for anything. Oh, lava pool. Perfect. A half hour had already passed and we hadn't collected a single block for the challenge. So I was starting to feel the pressure. Now is the time where we should start to split up a little. I trust your game skills more in the nether and I could start collecting a bunch of blocks and building that platform. I'm a little worried to take on the nether, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. With that decided, the two of us spent the remainder of the hour on our tasks. Before starting the challenge, we set up a light matic schematic that's gonna act as a blueprint for all the blocks we need. It's gonna tell us how many blocks we have left and where to place everything. At first, I thought it would be easiest to put the schematic over water and then build a platform for it, but I quickly realized it would be much easier to simply place it on a flat area of the desert. While I was wasting time, Wamba journeyed into the nether. All right, let's pray for a good spawn. Crud, dude, it's a basalt deltas. I decided to switch things up and work on a villager breeder before zombies killed all the villagers. Meanwhile, Wamba was searching far and wide for a nether fortress, but he wasn't having much luck. There's just nothing. He decided to start farming ender pearls while he was in the warped forest. Where are you, buddy? Oh, I hear him cackling away, but I, I can't. Cackling. Never heard an Enderman described as cackling. Before we knew it, we were already almost an hour into our challenge. Coming up on our first hour. I feel like we didn't get enough done. No, we didn't get anything done. <laughs> but we didn't dwell on our lack of progress for too long because there were lots of distractions. Oh, here we, oh my, there, oh, oh my gosh, there are like 40 Endermen in this one. I've never seen this. By the time Wamba killed all the Endermen, he had 12 pearls and the first hour was officially over. I knew we were gonna have to pick up the pace a bit in order to finish this challenge, but my hopes were still high. Things are starting slow, but like I'm really hoping to start filling this in now. I feel like we're actually, I'm starting to make good progress. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start trying to fill this in probably. I was a little worried that this, getting these pearls was gonna take a while. Oh, I might die, crap. Oh my gosh. I, I, need to, I need to take a second. Wumbo was having such a stressful time in the nether that he decided to take a breather and tell me some jokes. What do you call a factory that makes okay products? Uh, I don't know. A satisfactory. <laughs> I only know 25 letters of the alphabet. I don't know why. Oh my God. Spare me, man. At last, Wumbo managed to get to a nether fortress and start hunting for blaze rods. Hey, we aren't the quickest speedrunners, but we're efficient speedrunners. No, we're just not speedrunners at all. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was finished with my villager breeder, but I only had wheat seeds. I just, I just, need to somehow find potatoes or carrots. But Wumbo was on his way back from the nether and before I could find carrots or potatoes to finish my farm, it was time to take on the ender dragon. All right, I'm putting the first few things 
into the schematic. A green bed and a red bed. Let's go. <laughs> While Wuma gathered up all the resources we needed for the dragon fight, I crafted a diamond pickaxe so I could relocate the nether portal to our home base. And with that done, we were ready to go. All right, I am going to throw a pearl. It is this direction. Here we go. On the way to the stronghold, a thunderstorm began. We're gonna need one later in the video in order to collect all the mob heads, including the brand new piglin head. Thunderstorms can be pretty elusive when you need one, so we're hoping to get plenty more of these. All right, shall I throw another? Yep. The eyes of Ender led us straight into the heart of the jungle. Pearl, and I'll let you know. Oh, it's back, it's back. Okay, it's uh, it's right around here somewhere. Okay, wait, wait, this one went down. Nice. This one went down. Here it is, it's over here. After digging down for a bit, I once again found myself dazzled by mundane features from several updates ago. Dude, there's so many tropical fish. I've never seen fish in a cave. So dazzled, in fact, that I wasn't quite watching my step. Um. <gasps> oh! oh! Dude, that's devastating oh at the time this felt like a pretty major setback to me but my partner stayed determined enough for the both of us i feel like this run is a bust already it, it shouldn't take you more than like five minutes to get back i'll find the portal i'll get your stuff okay we have a good infrastructure we got all the carrots and stuff we can make a villager breeder when we're back we're about to beat the end throughout the challenge wumba's pep talks were enough to keep me going finally i made it back to the spot and began to dig down no you gotta be kidding me this can't be happening What's this up? What's can't up? Be happening. I got stuck in a hole with a baby villager or a baby zombie. That is so freaking oh. frustrating. I'm actually raging. But it wasn't long before I made it back to the hole again and Wumba started having issues of his own. Oh my gosh, I'm not going to die to silverfish. That would be so stupid. No, they're spreading. No, they're up. spreading. They're like, they're, they're like eight of them. After dealing with all the silverfish, Wumba decided to try and spook me as I dug my way into the stronghold. Yo, careful, careful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to scare you a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if it did, if it worked or not. I, I think I'm too tired to get scared. Already, man? Not only did Wumba fail to scare me, but I unintentionally ended up scaring him. Oh, 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 that was you. <laughs> I thought that was a creeper. Before we knew it, we were on. All right. All right, let's just do it. We set our spawns, Wumba placed the eyes into the portal frames, and then I jumped in. Arms away. Arms away. I'll set up a waterfall for you. It's teamwork is makes dream work. After Wumba's inspiring speech, we quickly shot all of the end crystals and we're ready to start killing the dragon. All right, he's finally perching. Ow. Ah, no! Okay. I raced back into the end and managed to get back just in time to steal the glory. All right, I'm gonna kill him. Oh! Nope. <laughs> you, you took it! <laughs> I guess I haven't been totally useless in this challenge after all. Killing the dragon unlocked a critical block for us, the dragon egg. But as Wumba tried to collect it, the impossible happened. It, it just went into the portal. Really? <laughs> Luckily, the egg was safe and sound, and I was able to collect it no problem. At this point, our plan was for Wumba to go looking for elytras on the Outer End Islands while I finished up the villager breeder and began trading. Sadly, the Minecraft gods had other plans for me, though. Dude, what? Dude, there's like actually 40 zombies. No, they got my villagers! Ah! I'm gonna ah. kill someone, dude! With all of my villagers dead, my villager breeder was now useless. Oh, the baby zombies. So I decided to take a bathroom break and Wamba kept exploring. Make that, I can make that, I can make that. Yeah. Nice throw. Oh, Mog. Get back from the toilet. Jeez, what is this, Amazon? After getting back from the bathroom, I decided to build a new villager breeder at the Desert Village, which was closer to our base anyhow. Wumba was finding some amazing loot in addition to the elytras, which was going to significantly speed up our progress. Oh, dude, I just found a looting three iron sword and then a diamond pickaxe with unbreaking three mending and efficiency five. Dude, this is what we needed. This is what we needed. I have to say, it was pretty funny doing mundane building while listening to Wumba get into dangerous situations over and over again. Oh, crud, I'm gonna die. No, 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 no. I, no, I'm literally gonna die. No. Wait, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Oh my gosh, my shield broke. I'm too clutch today. Thank God, dude. Thank God you're the one doing this. Cause like, it would go a lot different if I was in there. Yeah, yeah. The thing is we woke up early to start recording and I'm not a morning person. So I was dead tired, but I've pulled countless all nighters and this was Wumba's first one. So this should get interesting. Oh crud, I'm at two hearts. No dude. I managed to get all the villagers I needed into the breeder, meaning it was almost fully functional. It took me the rest of the hour to finish off the design and plant some carrots to get it going. Wumba finally returned from his end expedition with tons of goodies for us both at the beginning of our fourth hour. We spent the night killing creepers to get some gunpowder for rockets, and then we distributed the diamond gear while I smelted some cactus for green dye. Afterwards, we worked on clearing out the rest of the area for our schematic. It quickly became clear that we were gonna need some villagers to get all the enchantments we needed on our elytra and tools, so Wumba headed over to the desert village to start trading. I worked on a quick sugarcane farm and then decided it was finally time to start placing in some blocks. 
After getting a few random blocks into place, I went back to digging out the rest of the schematic while Wamba gathered wood for turning into sticks to trade. Eventually, Wamba had enough emeralds to start hunting for enchantments. Let's see what you got. Curse of Vanishing. Let's not get that. Got this guy, like, trapped in a house. All right. Oh, he might be a nitwit, actually. We're a couple of misfits. I am not just a nitwit. Pretty soon, we were already getting some great enchantments, which were really going to make the difference in this challenge. Dude, do I take efficiency five? I think you should, to be honest. All right, it's only 25 emeralds as well. Silk touch for nine. Oh, do I take it? I'm going to take it. Actually, yeah, looting is going to be needed. Oh, I got looting three right there. Nice. Finally, I was finished with the space for the schematic, and we could really get serious about filling everything in. Luckily, we had loads of biomes nearby that were going to make a lot of the blocks pretty easy. I filled in some of the terracotta blocks from the mesa as well as the gold block. Wombo put in the anvil so we could start putting the enchantments on our tools and after enchanting his elytra he decided to take the first mini expedition to get a beehive. Found a beehive. Nice dude that's, that's huge. That's one of the blocks. I, I think I can pick it up with silk touch. Yeah, I got it. Back at home, I was setting up the string duper, which would make getting wool much easier. At this point, it felt like we were pretty well established, but another hour had already slipped away. I began the hour by trying to fill out all the oak wood blocks, but I quickly became tilted with how scattered they were throughout the schematic. Little did I know this would become one of the greatest struggles of this challenge. In other news, Wumba's cat decided to pay him a visit. Hello, Caiaphas. He is going the loaf mode in front of me. A classic choice. They have like three modes. Loaf, stretched out, croissant. I started filling in some more of the wood blocks, and then I decided to craft something I sadly can't get on my flat world. Dude, look yeah. at this. What is this stuff? Oh, bamboo. I got that into place and then one by and I spent the night battling creepers in order to get more gunpowder for rockets. The next day I filled in some of the end stone blocks and then dug a hole next to our storage so I could hopefully get some easy cave access. Yo, found an amethyst crystal at the bottom of my hole. Yo, That is so go. helpful. No way. That's... I've never seen one of these. After checking out the geode, I filled in a bunch of the andesite blocks and Wumba placed in the white bed. Then he ventured out to get some flowers so I could easily work on all the dieable blocks. I placed in a few more more random blocks and then Wumba returned with the flowers. As Wumba prepared to go collect all the different types of wood for our collection, I began placing in all the stained glass, but my lack of a silk touch tool was becoming an issue. Dang it. <laughs> Wish I had silk touch. Oh, I, I got you. Oh. Over here by the glass on the pink one, <laughs> the pink paint right here. Thanks bro. There you go. At this point, I began coming to terms with my fate in this challenge. I think like the best thing for me to do is stay here and like just farm everything. Everything simple, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and like you're just gonna like be going out and gathering stuff that we need. I think that's gonna work really well. I took a little break from the glass to place in some of the flowers as Wumba arrived in the cherry biome. It's beautiful. Yeah? It's so gorgeous. There's a little village. Oh, there's a massive mountain range. We we are definitely gonna have a deep dark underneath it. Did I mention this is the first time either of us has played 1.20? Wumba grabbed all the cherry biome stuff and then moved to the next wood type. I placed in some more of the beds and then I decided to try to get some sheep for our base. Wumba returned home to place some blocks before realizing the same thing I had about our schematic. Dude, I have no clue where the muddy mangrove is. This is actually like- It takes so much time. There it is. I didn't get any sheep, but I did manage to bring some cows back for food. So I placed a few more blocks and then set forth once again in search of sheep. My partner filled in all the jungle and cherry wood blocks and we flew past 100 blocks collected. Suddenly this challenge felt kind of doable, but we were worried things would get much more difficult soon. Finally, I managed to transport some sheep back to the base just before- Wamba went to go make lunch real quick, and I set off to do some errands, like collecting gravel for concrete, giving the sheep some grass blocks to munch on, and filling in more of the wool blocks. Then I headed over to the mesa to grab a bunch more terracotta, and I was able to fill in some of the colors and craft the first bit of concrete. At that point, Wumba was finished eating, and he spotted a scary bad guy in the distance. Oh, hey, we got a uh, pillager right here. After filling in that banner, he got back to work on the wood, while I continued to grind away at all the diable blocks. Diable? More like diabolical. We were both crafting like crazy, and the block counter was shooting up at the fastest rate yet. It's like kind of satisfying. Yeah. After getting a few more blocks in place, Wumba took off to go gather some birch wood, and I crafted up the enchantment table so we could easily throw some low level enchants on our tools. Then I placed in the dragon egg, and Wumba returned to fill in the birch family. I'm gonna grab some stone and get all the paintings done. While he worked on that, I continued to chip away at the concrete blocks, and before long, all the painting pedestals were ready. As I continued on the colorful blocks and Wumba cycled through all the paintings, our block counter was rapidly approaching 200. But before we could hit it, the mobs forced us to go to sleep. <laughs> I saw you and I thought you were a little phantom just going across the screen. <laughs>
We quickly hit the 200 checkpoint the next morning when Wumba finished off the paintings, but celebrations were cut short by our new pest problem. Dude, Enderman is stealing blocks. Uh oh no. I worked on the colors all day, and after finishing up the paintings, Wumba also returned to placing the wood blocks, this time taking care of the mangrove family. I ran out of gravel, so I once again had to gather some for the concrete blocks. Okay, I'll get the bamboo stuff, I guess. Luckily, we had a bamboo forest just past our desert, so Wumba was able to quickly grab plenty of bamboo and start getting it all into place. We were getting pretty close to having one whole side of our schematic done. What if we just got this whole side finished first? Because it looks like we're making a lot of progress over here. Yeah, we're like almost done with it. Oh, also, before we forget it, I'm going to just place the end city banner. With the bamboo done, Wumba headed to the nether to grab the crimson and warped wood. Oh. Oh. Crap. Yeah? Our, our, our portal was booby-trapped. What? That was terrifying, holy cow. At this point, I was a little over halfway done with the rainbow. While he was in the nether, Wumba decided to grab some other blocks we needed as well. All right, I'm gonna get basalt blackstone out of the way as well. Wumba returned home and began filling in the nether wood, and we were both relieved to see that we were approaching another block checkpoint within the same hour. I gotta say, it doesn't feel as overwhelming anymore now that we've gotten a lot of progress. Yeah, that's why I wanted to start like filling stuff in. Yeah, I wanted to get like a good that's... chunk done, because otherwise it's, it's just, it just starts to feel too crazy. But but as much as I wanted to finish my task, my tummy was a grumbling. Hey dude, I'm gonna go eat lunch, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah, sounds good. This is an excellent opportunity to observe the Wanba in his natural habitat. Skeleton chill. Okie do. Perfect. Yo, mangrove, jungle. It is looking like Every single sign in Hank Woods is this. And different types of... Oh. Nine different types of woods, perfect, okay. Wumba got us to the 300 block mark by placing in all the signs, and then he decided to take care of the hanging signs. I guess this was his first time learning the crafting recipe. How the heck do we hang this? Oh, crap. Since I was still grabbing some grub, Wumba took to the caves to get some needed blocks, and he seemed to be having the time of his life. Oh, that was startling. He got out of the cave and placed in a few blocks just in time for me to come back from lunch. We stand once more. Hey, what's up? I'm almost done with the wood, so just Thanks. working on the hanging signs right now, and then I should be good. Apparently, Miko didn't like what he had to say. Miko, chill. Chill, Miko. Wamba began crafting all the hanging signs, and I went back to work on the colorful blocks. Okay, everything through magenta is now done. All I had left was the brown and the grayscale blocks, so I grabbed the cocoa beans from her chest and then took one last trip to the mesa for some of the terracotta colors I missed. I made sure to grab some red sand while I was there. Meanwhile, Wamba was ready to place all the hanging signs, which has to be one of the cooler things from this update. Dude, these are so sick. I love that they added these. As I was placing in the brown blocks, I had a bit of a revelation. We do finish early, we could stop early which is crazy to think about. <laughs> that is that is true. Wishful thinking. I went to the river to do some squid hunting for black dye, and then as I placed in the gray blocks, I had one of those intrusive content creator ideas. It would be funny to make a 24 hour challenge video and then obviously spend like weeks on it. <laughs> <laughs> and just try to convince the viewers that it was totally 24 hours. Oh my gosh. <laughs> After a few more minutes, most of the grayscale blocks were in place. I'm so close on these dang colors, dude. Let me look at our percentage. We are 40% done, <laughs> Mog. Hey, that's pretty good, man. That is solid. With both the colorful blocks and the wood types nearing completion, we finally had a nice chunk of the schematic filled in. Oh my gosh, dude. Free cam from above? Looking so satisfying. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty sick, I have to say. Okay, I think I'm done with the color. I'm gonna fill out granite and uh, andesite. I'm gonna, here, I'm gonna go get some bees. The cool walls of the cave offered me much needed relief from looking at rainbow blocks. And I think while I was filling in the red sandstone blocks, I might have actually had some fun, but not as much fun as Wamba, who was out getting buzzed. Yes, total bee location. Wamba heard my cat in the background and decided to introduce himself. They had a Miko. <laughs> Miko, Wamba says hi. He went weirdly silent after I told him you said I, so uh -oh. maybe he's not a Wumba fan. I'm not a Miko fan either. No! Oh no! I thought cats were supposed to scare away creepers. As I gathered my remains, Wumba returned home with our new bee friends. Afterwards, I worked on placing in all the granite and diorite blocks while Wumba prepared for another big expedition. A little stressed to go do the uh, ocean monument, but whatever. Are you just gonna go for it or? I'm gonna just go for it. Okay. I started working on all of the stone blocks, but then Wumba realized there was an issue. Oh wait, shoot, I forgot I don't have respiration. That's gonna be a problem. Luckily, I had a helmet with respiration on it from Wumba's end city raid, so I worked on placing some sandstone blocks while he flew back to get it. Dude, 
It's just remarkable. We have 17 hours left. I was filling in even more random blocks and needed to take a quick trip to the caves and I almost died again. No, dude. Ugh. And before I could even get what I needed, Wumbo was back at the base ready to swap helmets. Uh, I'm back, by the way. Okay, I'm coming up, Cam. I'm here. Zach. <laughs> There we go. There's your helmet. Uh, gracias. And with that, Wombo was ready for his second attempt at the Ocean Monument. I really hope I don't die. 12 seconds later. Got three hearts. While he struggled with that, I decided to collect some of the different leaf types. Pretty soon, Wombo had killed one of the Elder Guardians, meaning we now had the sponge. All he had to do was kill the other two so he could get rid of the mining fatigue and start grabbing prismarine blocks. But it seems that our seed made it extra easy for him. So this is really interesting. I think because this ship spawned right where the monument is, it actually got rid of one of the Elder Guardians for me. I turned my attention to some of the plants we missed, and with the Ocean Monument defeated, Wumbo was ready to drink some milk and collect the prismarine. Milking a cow sound effect is disgusting. <laughs> You're just jealous. Jealous? Jealous? You're just jealous, you can't make that sound. While on his way back to the Ocean Monument, Wumba found a sunken ship, and inside was a treasure map, which we'll need for one of the hardest blocks to get, the Conduit. Afterwards, Wumba was able to collect all the Prismarine blocks we needed, and he was already starting to feel the fatigue. I'm starting to feel tired, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, Wumba. Oh, I know. This was, uh, what I signed up for. I kicked off the next hour by placing in a few more beds while Wumba hunted for the buried treasure. With the heart of the sea secured, all we needed for a conduit were the eight Nautilus shells. Wumba returned to our base, and the two of us began filling in tons of blocks, quickly finishing up the whole Prismarine family. I put in a few more bed colors, and then Wumba gave me a once-in-a-lifetime offer. Hey, you want to get an achievement? Yeah. <laughs> nice. After that life-changing experience, I placed in a few more blocks and then headed back to the caves again to try to grab some deep slate. When I returned, I was able to place in several more blocks. While I did this, Wumba managed to get a looting three sword, which officially solved our food problem. It's also going to be useful for getting wither skulls later on in order to get the beacon block. Yeah, hopefully we can like, oh, it's a pink sheep. Yo, let's go. I began working on the banners and then Wumba came back with some food. The supplier of uh, the, the butcher. I'm gonna just stop. There you go. Uh, I'll give you 64 mutton. He then placed in the item frames using the leather he got and then took off for the caves while I placed in some super random stuff like the dragon head, chest, and hopper. Once more, I struggled with game features I don't have access to on my super flat world. So does Deep Slate not craft into anything? You have to- Deep Slate does not. Oh, it, yeah. it's cause I silk touched it, crap. But with that figured out, I started placing all the Deep Slate blocks in until Wumba needed my help after dying while creeper farming. Oh God. Kidding me? I helped him get his stuff back and then decided to add just a little insult to injury. It is so relieving to not have to worry about dying. I never worry, Wumba. <laughs> not jealous at all. We kept farming gunpowder for the rest of the night, but we were having some pretty close calls. Oh, oh, that creeper got really big. Natural habitat. Oh, are you joking me, dude? Mr. Hardcore over here. I couldn't help but tease him a little bit, but rest assured, it comes from a place of jealousy. I spent some time collecting our oxidized copper blocks and then placed in a bunch more stuff, including the nether plants. Wamba decided to work on placing in all the boats and chest boats, and this time it was his turn to demonstrate his lack of game knowledge. Yo, I'm finally making a chest boat. Chest boats have been in the game for a minute. Wait, wait no, have they? I thought they were just 120. Nope. 119. Really? Yeah, dude. I finished up with the deep slate blocks, and then I realized we needed lots of different coral blocks. Uh, whenever you want to, we should probably start grabbing all the corals. All right. You want me to get those, or do you want to do it? Uh, I could probably do it, I guess. I've never seen coral fans and coral bushes. Oh, yeah, you should. I think any opportunity for you to do something you can't in super flat, you should do it. But before setting off to go get those, I decided to stick around and try and fill in just a few more of the really random blocks taking out. Hey, yo, percentage check. We are... 58.6% done. Not bad. Yeah, we're way ahead of schedule. Oh, nice. You got a whole bunch of these plants. I did not want to do those. Oh, yeah. I've been just like filling in random stuff. I don't think I will have the mental ability to do that. I, I can be like the taskmaster or something. I'm fine just sticking back here and working on filling things in. But my hard work filling in things was paying off because the right side of our blueprint was finally starting to look pretty filled in. Wamba finished up placing all the glass and water to contain the boats while I filled in some more of the missing stone blocks. The counter shot up to 500 in no time once Wumba started placing in the boats, meaning we were over halfway through the blocks. All right, I got all the boats. That's all the wood. But since we started with all the easiest ones, the second half was going to take much longer. Trust me. Wumba thought one of our bee nests disappeared, and I had to explain to him that I just moved it. But this reminded me to go ahead and make the beehive. And as I continued hunting down more missing blocks, Wumba decided to make another trip to the nether for missing materials. First one, basalt is done. I'm going to go get 
Blackstone next. I crafted our jukebox and then decided to work on the candles while Wumba worked on grabbing some nether bricks. I got about halfway through the candles and then Wumba got a nice reward when he went to mine the soul sand. Another benefit of splitting up is that I could let Wumba know which blocks were missing. Are you picking up lots of quartz? I honestly completely forgot about that. By the time Wumba had gathered plenty of quartz and warts, we had made it to... End rod, torch, terracotta, gold pressure plate, all examples of random blocks I placed while Wumba was under attack in the nether fortress. Holy cow. Okay. Since he now had looting three on his sword, he decided to stay for a while and farm wither skeleton skulls. All right, there are four wither skeletons. I'm telling you, I'm betting you $1 that one of these guys drops a skull. Okay, I'll take that bet. There's one more wither skeleton. Nope, I win. <laughs> no, there were four. I said four. I killed three. Last one. Please, sir. No. Nope. All right. I guess I'll have to donate you a dollar. <laughs> I celebrated being a dollar richer, and Wumba finally got his first skull before making a terrible realization. Oh, wait, we need four. Uh, one for just the normal skull. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. Dang. All right. I mean, if you don't mind me just getting these while I'm here, I can. Yeah, do it, dude. Wombo was going to be busy for a while, so I worked on all the dirt types like pods all and coarse dirt. I then silk touched some clay and got that into place, as well as the smooth stone. With progress underway on the nether blocks and the copper blocks, there weren't many large groups of blocks remaining. Yeah, copper's really going to help uh, fill this out. We're starting to get down there, dude. Once I do the coral and the ores, uh, there's really not going to be a lot left. As I was working on getting the bricks done, my elytra broke, but luckily I was able to trade with villagers in order to get the XP to repair it with mending. Then as I was finally filling in the bricks, I got jump scared. Oh, that rabbit scared me. What the heck? Next, I decided to tackle the pumpkins and Wumba got his second skull. I reminded Wumba that he would need to grab gilded blackstone, but I guess it wasn't a good time because he very nearly died shortly after. I might die. Part and a half. Oh, dude, I, I went in without a chest plate, like just flying in and then the, I got ambushed. I took care of some sandstone blocks some banners, the iron trap door and moss carpet and some cobblestone variants before Wumbo was finally able to get another skull. Yes, I got it. I got it on the very next one. Dude, no way. I'm on my way back. <laughs> yes. We were both very relieved to have that crucial task finish. I headed to the caves once again to collect some missing blocks, and Wumba managed to grab the gilded blackstone block on his way back to the base. While trying to collect some ore, I realized I'd misplaced my silk touch pick at some point, which would end up haunting me for like the entire rest of the challenge. Oh crap. Did you take the silk touch pick from me? No, you have your own, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Where'd I put mine? Crap. I misplaced my really good pickaxe. Hey, time to look. Dang, dude, what? We'll find it later. I, I guarantee you we'll find it. All right, you got so much stuff to put in place. Wumba kicked us off by placing in the wither skeleton skull, and then I filled in the dripstone and soul blocks. I crafted and placed in a coal block, and then started working on the blackstone family. While I did that, Wumba decided it was time to tell me more terrible jokes. Where do you find a cow with no legs? Uh, I don't know, hit me. Right where you left it. Oh, that one's sad. All right, let's check the percentage. 75.5%, we're three quarters of the way done. I finished up the blackstone, and then Wumba noticed our visitor. <laughs> Yo, wait, there's an enderman stuck in one of our boats. I know, and he's placing dirt and picking it up over and over again. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, should I kill him? Maybe just leave him. Okay. He's our pet now. Little did we know, but this guy would become really important later. The two of us then finished up a ton more of the nether blocks. Dude, we're so close to finishing this half. Really? Yeah, I think we just need like the shulkers, weathered copper, and the banners. Yeah, and the candles. We're getting there though. As I finished up the quartz blocks, Wumba offered to go get a moss block from a lush cave so I could finally finish the azalea bushes and rooted dirt. But seconds later, he totally forgot and instead spent the night collecting gunpowder while I grew some huge mushrooms and finished the mushroom blocks. I then borrowed Wumba's pick so I could collect a few of the missing ores like I tried to do earlier. We were just one block from the 600 mark, but the fatigue was really beginning to hit Wumba hard. Mm. Oh, that was the first yawn. So it starts. No, it starts and it's not gonna stop. Wumbo was really concerned about how long the sniffer items would take and decided to go look for some suspicious sand in the desert temple. There is a lot of sand here. Oh yeah, there is suspicious sand. I'm gonna get my screenshot in front of it. We weren't really sure what to do about the unobtainable blocks in this challenge. So we decided that as long as one of us took a screenshot with each one, it would count. Here are all the snapshots so far. This new one means we've officially hit 600 blocks collected. This also means to complete the challenge, we'll have to to confront the warden to get a photo with the reinforced deep slate. But that's a problem for later. For now, we're on to another hour.
Wumba kicked off the hour by visiting a trail ruins and taking a picture with the suspicious sand while I collected more ores. Wumba tried getting a sniffer egg from the ruins, but he just kept getting tricked by purple items. Ooh, what is this? It's purple. It is a purple candle. Ooh. Oh, there's a uh, purple glass pane. I got really excited. It looks like it's something enchanted. Back in the caves, I managed to find a skeleton spawner. Well, we can do the whole mossy cobble family now. Wow, I got four cats. <laughs> Like the music disc. Oh. Four of the from same one. From one. From one skeleton spawn. Jeez. I returned from the caves and headed straight towards the warm ocean near spawn to pick up some of the coral blocks. Wumbo was having no luck getting a sniffer egg at the trail ruins, so he decided to go and look at some ocean structures instead. While doing so, he could hunt drown for tridents and nautilus shells. I was dealing with a drown with a trident myself, and unfortunately, my shield broke at the worst possible moment. <sighs> Dang it. It's so frustrating. But our luck turned around when Wumba finally found the sniffer egg at the ocean ruins. Oh, sniffer egg. Let's go. Let's go. So we actually need two of these. One for the actual item and then one for Matching. the items. Yeah. Luckily, it didn't take him long at all to find the second one. I began filling in the mossy cobble family with the blocks I collected in the dungeon. And then I began placing some coral without water in order to get the dead versions. Wumba returned from his travels and realized that our bee nests were no longer collecting honey. Where did our bees go? Did they die? I think they all died in your fires, dude, or like just from flying around. I will have to go get some more beehives. I placed on the cobweb I grabbed from the mine shafts, and then Wumba filled in one of the blocks we forgot, the little blue grass thingy. I started working on placing water into the schematic so we could check off all the living coral blocks, while Wumba spent the night hunting for nautilus shells again. After I crafted the soul campfire and torch, he actually managed to get his first shell. I got one nautilus shell so far. I then placed in some of the ore blocks I had gathered, and Wumba found a big group of drown that proved to be very useful. I got it. I got a trident. Let's go. Getting the trident was a big relief because it brought us one step closer to being able to collect the dreaded mob heads. Dude, progress is great though. We are at 80.1%. Dang. I placed in the redstone torch and soul lantern while Wumba mined some raw gold for me so I could make the block. How do you craft tinted glass? Four amethyst crystals and a glass. I guess I never learned this crafting recipe because it was just too painful. Man, I wish I could get this stuff in my flat world. Wumba said he was going to take care of the wither, but I think the challenge was really starting to slow down his brain. Function. Oh my gosh, I'm totally going on tangents. I'm starting to like forget things. I, I needed to get mending for my armor first. Oh, Sniffer is up. Sniffer is up. Yo, bro. I want to call you Snifflet. I think that's just what they're called. <laughs> Come on, Wumba. That's like naming a baby cat kitten. I filled in more of the red sandstone blocks and then Wumba used his fortune pick on some diamonds so I could get the block in place. Then he taught me how to craft yet another super flat unobtainable. Is scaffolding all bamboo or what? Bamboo and stream. <laughs> Weird. After that, I returned to the trusty lava pool on the hill to grab some obsidian for an end chest. What was the other thing I need to do? I'm losing it. I gotta get beehives and gunpowder. Beehives and gunpowder tonight. If you say so. As the sun set, Wumba took off on his bees and gunpowder mission. I stayed home and placed in the lectern and then had a bit of a close call with a skeleton. But the danger continued as server lag attempted to end both of our lives. Oh, whoa, whoa. I almost just died of lag. Oh, well, me oh too. I might. Dude, what the I might, hell? I know. I just freaking died. Dude, that was so unfair. What the actual... I'm falling through the void. Dang it. Wumba respawned back at the base and borrowed my elytra to get his stuff back in time. While he continued hunting for new bees, I finished off a few extra redstone and diorite blocks before heading back to the ocean to collect some kelp for the dried kelp block. Wumba made it back and made an underground room for our bees to live in so they wouldn't fly away, and then I placed the kelp and sea pickle just before another hour ended. Wumba spent the rest of the night farming creepers again. Hi, Miko. I decided to join him, and the two of us discussed what a group of creepers should be called. Ooh, three creepers. We have a stampede of creepers. There should be, you know, just like a pride of lions. It's a, a pride of creepers. Creeping of creepers. A, a yeah, creep a creeping of creepers. Of creepers. A bushel of creepers. A bushel. Yeah. Oh, holy moly. One, two, three, four, five, six creepers. Okay, that is a bushel and a half. A far long of bushels. Let us know in the comments what you think it should be. Once the sun came up, Wumba decided to head to the end dimension to kill the wither. Meanwhile, I spent a few minutes trying to figure out how to craft a target block before getting that in with the purple pillar. My cat was having some sort of existential crisis, so I took a moment to check in. You okay, Miko? Okay, okay. Then I got in several more blocks before Wamba realized that he forgot the soul sand for the wither. But since he was already in the end, he decided to grab the rest of the shulker shells we needed to get all the different colors. Somehow I was still finding more missing red sandstone and oak wood blocks due to the absolutely terrible organization of our schematic. So my cat decided to sing me a song to cheer me up. <laughs> was that your cat or? Yes, that was my cat. 
<laughs> it was wonderful. Good boy, Miko. Good song. Speaking of the horrible schematic, I was beginning to find some mistakes. You you have Cauldron in here twice. I don't think you have a Loom in here. Uh. I might not. I think you missed Loom and you have Cauldron twice, so I'm just gonna put the Loom where one of the Cauldrons is. <laughs> Things just really weren't going my way because then everyone's favorite mob decided to come pay me a visit. Wow, these guys are truly horrible. But luckily, Wumba was having a bit of a better time. Got it, 20 shells. All right, I'm on my way back. I filled in the iron bar and amethyst blocks just as Wumba made it back from the end. He then headed out to farm Drown for Nautilus shells, and while in the ocean, he grabbed some mycelium from the Mushroom Island. We were still missing a bunch of redstone blocks, so I started crafting those and Wumba got another Nautilus shell, bringing our count up to four. The next day, Wumba brought back the mycelium block and we came within inches of disaster. Oh, creeper, creeper, behind you, behind you, run, 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 run. <laughs> Yo. After that close call, I was feeling bold. Oh, do you need peonies? Pee on these nuts. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude, oh my god, <laughs> that was so bad. Since the sniffer had hatched nearly an hour ago, we hadn't really done anything with him, and Wumba was beginning to worry it could be a big time suck. Dude, this sniffer, I'm worried, man. So Wumba took the sniffer into the nearby savanna, and just as I was placing in a few more banner colors, it found something in the dirt. Oh, oh, I got torch flower seeds. Hi, Miko. The sniffer wasn't finding anything else, so Wumba led him to a new spot while I filled in a bunch more candle colors. I needed more wax for the candles, and I was pretty alarmed when I found Wumba's B room. Oh, you should probably put a door on this. It's gonna fly out again. I don't know. I figured like the ladder might stop them, but uh, it, they're probably gonna get out. <laughs> yeah, just make a door, dude. Since it was once again nighttime, Wumba went shell hunting, and I placed in the lightning rod and iron block. I then filled in some of the blackstone blocks I missed until Wumba asked me to try to get the other plant from our sniffer. He's sniffing. This guy's not doing it anything. I'm done with this guy. This guy sucks. I'm not impressed. Yeah, that was a mistake. The next morning, Wumba grew his torch flower seeds and then headed off to a lush cave to grab some moss for me. While there, Wumba realized something terrible. Oh, crud, Mog. What? I know the one that's going to mess this up is we need this small drip leaf and that you can only get that from a wandering trader. Except that's not true at all. Neither of us realized during the challenge that you can actually just pick these up with shears. Just go with it, okay? Wumba returned from the lush cave and we were able to put in the azalea leaves and bushes and the big drip leaf. I then returned to working on the blackstone and redstone blocks I'd been filling in earlier. Not only had we passed 700 blocks, but Wumba pointed out that we were nearly at the halfway mark of the challenge. 49 minutes until we get halfway. You tell me in 49 minutes is the halfway mark? Yes. Wumba, that makes me want to die. On the bright side, Wumba got another Nautilus shell and I managed to place the redstone repeater. I then got in the comparator and observer just before starting to lose it a bit. What is this? Why is there just an item frame here? Oh, it's the item frame. Got it. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. This is now the longest I've ever played Minecraft for. So rookie numbers, dude. After a brief panic when he couldn't find his Nautilus shells, Wumba decided to spend the day with our sniffer. Ew, the inside of it is like... Weird. The inside of the sniffer? Yeah. Get out of there, man. You can see its legs. Don't go in there. Meanwhile, I headed to the ocean again to finish off the coral stuff I missed on my first pass. Wumba had no luck with the sniffer, and after a night of creeper hunting, he decided to finally go fight the wither. All right, amigo. I am not coming back without a nether star or a uh, wither rose. Okay. Not only would the wither give us the nether star for the beacon block, but it would also give us a wither rose, which is why Wumba brought chickens. There he is. Nice, dude. Good luck. Unfortunately, he made one drastic mistake. No, we didn't kill the chickens. Did you poison them first? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, you have to. That's devastating. That, dude. Like, ended our run right there. Right there. there, there. Since the only way to get a wither rose would be to farm three more skulls and spawn a new wither, it looked like we had just lost hours of time. Until... If he didn't kill... Oh, yes, I got a rose. Let's nice, go. Nice, dude. Let's go, save. Oh, that was kind of that was kind of clutch. After that massive relief, Wumba returned to our base and placed in the rose that almost ended our run. After placing in the daylight sensor, I returned to my trusty lava pool on the hill to get the obsidian for the beacon. Afterwards, I placed in the honeycomb block as Wumba set up a temporary 3x3 base for the beacon so we could get the power up. I placed in some more banners, and then after being AFK bombed by a creeper, I finally finished off the beds once and for all. That night, Wumba was slain while searching for seashells by the seashore and I felt pretty bad for him. Do you want to borrow my rockets and elytra? I might have to. Do you want to sleep? I thought you'd never ask. Oh, you got an enderman on you. Dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is so <laughs> this is so stupid. The two of us just could not catch a break, but after another percentage check, we weren't feeling too bad. Oh, what's our percentage at? Let me take a look. We are... No way. Wait, wait, wait. We're 89.7% done. Uh... 
Wumba and I both searched for his stuff, and luckily Wumba was able to find where he died after just a few minutes. I then headed to the mountains to grab some snow and ice. Soon it was nighttime again, and Wumba took off to go get shells while I placed in the snow and ice I had collected. Ugh. I, I just can't. The mobs were incredibly frustrating, so I decided to go on a trip to collect some of the flowers that Wumba had missed, like the Allium, the Lily of the Valley, and the Blue Orchid. Hi, Miko. On my way back from my adventure, my elytra once again broke. Ah! Crap! You good? You good? My elytra broke in the middle of nowhere. That sucks, bro. You need me to come rescue you? <laughs> <laughs> At the top of the hour, Wumba came to rescue me with a backup elytra. We even managed to find a supposedly rare item. Cool. Tall grass, let's go. People always say oh, it's like the rarest thing in the game. Yeah, right. Yeah. After taking off, I immediately ran out of rockets, causing Wumba to attempt a risky mid-air refuel. Only expert pilots should attempt this. I haven't gotten any uh, rockets. Hey, wait, that's working. <laughs> <laughs> no way. You, did, like, it, boosted me. did it really? Boosted me significantly. Thanks to Wumba's boost, I made it home and placed in the pink petals. Ferns still. Where do we get those, dude? Ferns? Um. Oh, from a taiga. From a tiger? Taiga. Taiga. <laughs> oh. <laughs> After that terrible joke, I placed the grindstone in the lily pad, and Wumba put down the neutral colored shulker box and two more ore blocks. All that we have left is deep slate emerald, normal gold, and deep slate coal. Wumba decided to search for those three elusive ores while I began filling in all of the wax copper blocks and having a mental breakdown. Dude, leave me alone! God, these stupid, stupid... Die! 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 I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! Almost just went psycho mode. I wish they could feel your pain. I wish also they could feel real pain. I hope it's programmed well so it feels real. Yeah, like you want to hear the skeleton whimper when you kill its friend. Wamba made it to an absolutely massive cave and quickly found the missing gold and coal blocks. I finished up with the copper blocks, Wamba returned home and placed it in the rooted dirt, and then I got the netherrack block in, which somehow we had missed. Afterwards, I set off to look for ferns in a taiga biome. For once, Wamba was the one to stay back at the base. He worked on getting all the minecarts done. While hunting for the taiga biome, I managed to pick up some powder snow, and then shortly after, I found the ferns I was looking for. As I flew back to the base, Wamba was finalizing his pizza order. Ah, uh, all right, so this is what I got. Ham, pepperoni, Italian sauce, Sausage, bacon, onions, black olives, and pineapple. Extra. That's a monstrosity. Dude, it's a it's a beautiful monstrosity. No thanks. I do not want to cheese it up. Like, how dare they even ask that? I've been playing Minecraft for almost 13 hours and they ask if I want to cheese it up. <laughs> I made it back to the base and Wumba gave me a little music update. Back in back by ACDC. Good song. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great impression. <laughs> I placed in the ferns and powder snow for my expedition and then started preheating the oven. I need to bake a cake. Sounds delicious. After that delicious task, I had a bit of an existential crisis when Wumba confronted me about how I talk. Should I start copying you and say word? Are you making fun of me, bro? Word. That's not how I say it. Word. That's not how do you say it? Stop. Are the kids not saying word anymore? I don't know. I haven't heard the term before, but I like it. They're not? Dang, am I the, like the only dude who says word? I think so. What are the kids saying these days? Facts? I managed to pull myself together, and then curiosity got the best of me as I completed the lava cauldron. Can you get hurt from lava in a cauldron? Uh, yes. Really? Mm -hmm. ah! I farmed up a bit of moss and then used it to complete the mossy stone brick family while Wamba worked on finishing off the rails. I crafted the two pistons we needed, but we didn't have slime, so I decided to fly back to the swamp biome to look for some. Luckily, it was a full moon, which is perfect for finding swamp slimes. I found the frogs to be absolutely delightful, so much so that I was almost distracted to death. No, 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 no! That was very, very close. But I made it home safe, and I was able to finish off the slime block and the sticky piston as we approached another hour mark. Hour 14 was off to a great start as Wumba got another Nautilus shell. We only needed one last shell to finish off the conduit. Dude, I could totally get that last shell tonight if I get lucky. If you got lucky, you would have gotten it 10 nights ago, dude. But luck or no luck, the final shell revealed itself. Oh my gosh, I got two in one night. Here it is. 
Let's it's go. literally here. Are we done? We are done. Cool. Let's uh, let's let's sleep. The conduit had to be one of the hardest blocks to get, so getting it done was a huge accomplishment. For a change of pace, the two of us decided to try and hunt down the notorious Deep Slate Emerald Ore together. These are super rare because emeralds mostly generate above Deep Slate level. We flew to a mountain biome and dug down, only to accidentally break into a deep dark biome. Oh crud! Deep dark. You got the deep dark. <laughs> we began strip mining, and then I made my way into the deep dark too, and it was my first time seeing it in survival. Wow, this stuff looks magical, dude. We figured we'd just go ahead and start collecting all the different blocks, and Wamba even remembered to grab two sensors so that we could craft the new calibrated sensor block. We got everything but the shrieker, which was pretty nerve-wracking. Oh god. It's fine. It's fine. So that's the shrieker? No, I don't I haven't seen a shrieker yet. Careful, careful walking. This is freaky, man. Okay, there's a shrieker over here, but the problem is it is going to activate it. Oh, it's fine. You get it. I don't have silk touch. Oh, here. Let me give you my pick. I really probably should <laughs> not be wimping out. Oh. Yeah, see, it's fine. We're all good. <laughs> Where am I? Oh, I don't know. Hey. What's up? <laughs> Just as we were getting back to mining, my doorbell rang. Pizza time. I flew back to the base as fast as I could and discovered we actually had company. Wow, Wandy T's here. Oh, is he really? Yeah, I'll check if he has a uh, trips trip leaf. Yeah, he didn't have anything. All right, um, I need to eat this pizza. I'm gonna work on uh, getting the deep slate emeralds. Right, I'll be back in like 15. And so I departed to munch on pizza for 15 minutes while Wumba continued strip mining. Just as I finished eating and started placing in the skulk blocks, Wumba finally found the ore. Got it. Oh, there are two next to each other. No way. Yeah, there are literally two next to each other. That's crazy. Holy cow. Well, it's one for each of us. Gotta love a BOGO deal. Wumba returned home to place in the block, which was another huge obstacle off our list. But just to make sure the challenge was still difficult, a creeper decided to knock us back a few blocks. Ah, uh, creeper. No! Oh! No! Oh, it blew up the spore blossom. No! Dude, I... Uh, uh, no more mobs ever again. Dude, it, it got rid of our skulk vein, man. We figured since we needed a screenshot with the reinforced deep slate anyhow, we could grab another skulk vein then. I crafted and placed the calibrated sensor, which has got to be one of the coolest looking blocks in the game, by the way. And then I got in the other skulk blocks as well. While I was doing that, Wumba returned to the lush cave to replace our spore blossom and hanging roots. Literally, I think I'm going to puke. Are you okay? I'm okay. What's going on with you? <laughs> I'm getting tired. You're getting tired? As Wamba grew wary, I only grew stronger. All right, candles are done. For the first time in the challenge, we decided to turn off Fulbright, allowing us to see how dark it actually was around our schematic. Okay, it is dark over here. <laughs> This is what we've been playing with? This is why I don't do that. We did our best to torch the area to prevent any more creeper setbacks. That's, oh, God almighty. By hour 15, we were only a few blocks away from the 800 mark, meaning just over 100 blocks remain. You should probably start with frog lights. I'll finish banners. By the time you're done with that, I'll probably be ready to go bed mining with you. And so as I began filling in the last of the banners, Wamba took off for the swamp. On his way there, he spotted some turtles, which he quickly bred to get the turtle egg block. Shortly after, he made it to the swamp and started working on the frogs. The banners were kind of driving me crazy. I just need one yellow flower. <sighs> but on the bright side, at least now there were no mobs to worry about pun intended. All right, well, I got one of the eggs going right now. One egg will get like five tadpoles. Uh, I'll work on just getting the first orange ochre frog light or whatever it is. No, this frog is so stupid in the mind. Its IQ is in the single digits. I love the way you get mad, bro. I have, it's like Christian cursing. Christian okay. cursing. <laughs> Hi, Nico. I only had one banner left, but it was proving to be weirdly difficult. Dude, this one yellow sheep will not eat grass. It will, it refuses to eat the grass. Eat, eat the grass. Every other sheep has replenished their wool like 10 times. And this one sheep will not eat the grass. Wamba got his first frog light and my sheep still hadn't eaten. What is wrong with this guy? He shares the same brain cell as the frog. Finally, after a solid five minutes of screaming at the sheep, he finally ate and I was able to put in the last banner. With those done, I ventured out into the world to find a sunflower biome, which was one of the missing flowers. Ah, creeper killed my slimes. Creeper killed my slimes. 
Don't get my slime. <laughs> Yo. I was able to locate the sunflowers, and after placing those in the roses, it looked like the only plant left was the pitcher pod, which we needed to get from the sniffer. I wanted to work on the unwaxed copper necks, but we both discovered a big drawback to our schematic. Due to the way that Lightmatica renders things, it was impossible to tell whether or not our item frames had actually been filled in. This, coupled with a complete lack of organization, made this part of the schematic by far the worst to complete. Hey, you said 12 o'clock was going to be your prime time. I and mean, now it's uh, exactly 12 hours past that. Yep. No, I meant AM. <laughs> oh, really? Hey, 12 AM is my prime time. Can't you tell? I'm in my prime, baby. Oh my gosh, I gotta turn it down. <laughs> I switched things up and began preparing some fire res potions for ancient debris mining. As I was doing that, Wumba got the second frog light. Yes, I got the pearlescent frog light. One more to go. Nice. He headed to a mountain biome to hatch a cold frog while I prepared a shulker box full of wool and wood to use for bed mining. But unfortunately, when Wumba's frog grew up, it was the wrong color. There we Wait, what? It's an orange frog. Why? I don't know. I'm in a frozen... I'm on a windswept hills. Oh, I don't know if windswept hills counts. It's like snowy. Wamba went to go get a new tadpole as I headed into the nether to start mining. Remember all that TNT we got from the desert temples? Well, it was finally time to put it to good use. Unfortunately, I had no flint and steel or fire aspect bow, so my only option for ignition was a risky bed maneuver. But the demolition went fine, and I was able to get my first few pieces of ancient debris. Wamba was still working on getting the last frog type, but while doing something, so he remembered to pick up sweet berries, which was another block we'd miss. With less than a hundred blocks to go, we headed into Bro, dude, be careful, please, Mog. I have my fire potion on. No, but you got down to don't watch way me. too low there. Don't watch a, don't watch a genius at work. I'm not gonna screen share to you anymore. I see how it is. I was playing Minecraft before you were born, kid. Mmm. I don't need your notes, okay? How did you know I was lying about my age? <laughs> After using up all the TNT, we had three ancient debris. Nowhere near the 41 we needed, but a good start nonetheless. I started doing some bed mining, but pretty soon my pickaxe was nearly dead, so I was forced to head back to the base. Sadly, as I was mining up to the surface, the pick broke, and I literally had to mine my way out by hand. But before long, I had made it back to the base, and I was able to place in the ancient debris. Both Wamba and I agreed it was time for a recharge. I might go for some more coffee in a second. Yeah, I think I might hit another Red Bull. My partner was still working on that final frog light, so I decided to try a new idea for getting our netherite block. I headed to a bastion with a treasure room and prepared to go in. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you shouldn't. Think of how much you'll hate yourself and die. I mean, I will hate myself, but I think I'll hate myself even more for not trying. You know? But before I could gather the courage to go in, Wamba had collected the final frog light and was making his way back to the base. So I chickened out and headed home to meet him. Hey, look at this. I see you coming into the portal right before me. Oh. <laughs> Psych, I'm making it in first. That's the wrong one. Oh, is it? Yeah. I, I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I'm gonna beat you. I'm in first. No. Wumba placed in the frog lights and turtle egg, and then I put in the sweet berries he brought back. This is pretty crazy that we did all this today. For real. Before heading to the nether, the two of us crafted some new diamond ticks and enchanted them. Then, on a whim, Wumba decided to visit our sniffer, and he actually got lucky. Oh, no, no, no. He did. He did. He got the pitcher pod. Wait, you got it? Yes, it was just on the ground. Bro, yes. that's huge. Oh, yes. Dude, that's awesome. All right, I got the pitcher pod going. Nice. Wamba needed more rockets for the nether, so I decided to place in a few of the shulker box colors. Nice. Hi, Miko. Our anvil broke before we could finish enchanting our new picks, so we both took to the mines real quick to get more iron. Finally, after enchanting all of our gear, we were officially ready to go. All right, let's have our netherite block by seven hours left. All right, shall we? Rather than bed mining, the two of us started strip mining with our new picks, and very quickly the ancient debris started coming in. Why was I so excited to do this 24 hours? I don't know, bro. It was really funny to me. But as my pickaxe got low, I switched over to the bed mining technique, and I actually started having some results with that method. By just 33 minutes into the hour, we had all the debris we needed. All right, I'm out. I cannot express how good it felt to get the netherite block and lodestone into place. With that out of the way, only one daunting task remained the mob heads. So Wumba took off to capture the mobs we'd need so we'd be ready in the event of a thunderstorm. While he did that, I finally placed in all of the shulker box colors. Wumba had a pretty close call while he was trying to capture the piglin. Oh, he ran right over the boat. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the base, I decided to get rid of the item frames and instead place all of the unwaxed copper into a chest so I could actually see what I was doing. After finishing that and placing in the snow layer block, we were officially within 50 blocks of the finish line, just in time for... 
Just a few seconds into the hour, I experienced probably the best death of this whole challenge so far. Oh, dude. I worked on grabbing all of the saplings and placing them into pots. While doing so, I encountered a mysterious item. Bro, what is this? That's a that's a pitcher pod. It's one of the things the sniffer drops. Oh. Be honest, did you know what that was? We kept filling out this terrible section of the schematic, getting all the missing plants and saplings into place, and then Wamba made sure we had all of the stages of the anvil. Then Wamba started working on all the different crops and realized the irony of doing this over 17 and a half hours in. Out of anything I could be searching for, I'm searching for potatoes. <laughs> The last item we need. We have blocks of netherite. We have beacons. We have everything but potatoes. Finally, he found some in a sunken ship. There were two of the new smithing armor trim inside of that chest, but I found potatoes and I was more excited for that. <laughs> I finished up with all the potted plants while Wumba worked on crafting the end crystal. Remember that enderman in the boat from earlier? This enderman came in clutch like, like 10 hours later. Let's go. We spent the remainder of the hour continuing to fill this section in with all the random plants and coral fans. For the first time, it felt like the finish line was within arm's reach. Wamba went to go trade with some piglins in order to get the materials for a respawn anchor as I continued filling in the missing saplings and mushrooms. And that's when Wamba made a groundbreaking discovery. We're on day 69. Oh! I placed in the tripwire hook and weeping vines, and Wumba got some regular ice from a mountaintop. With just a few blocks remaining, we decided to go to the ancient city to replace our skulk vein and take a picture with the reinforced deep slate. It was my first time doing this in survival mode, and things were pretty intense. Holy moly. Yeah, dude. All right, we got- Crazy. Oh, I just got darkness. That's not good, right? No. That's very bad. Subtitles on. Light, lights flickering. And I'm going to get my screenshot. There it is. The 900th block. Got the screenshot. Get the blocks. Okay. Get, get the blocks. I can't see anything. I got a vein and I got one sensor. Okay. We got her. We got everything. Let's get out of here. Let's go. Dude, this place is scary, you know, man. Careful, dude. Stay shifting because there's a sensor right over there. How, how can we get out of here? Because I'm worried that thing's going to go off. Oh, it won't go off. It's fine. No shot. It goes off. We got out okay, made it home, and reflected on our challenge. I can't wait to never play on this world again. <laughs> Dude, I really, I'm, I'm really impressed that we pulled this off, but not quite yet, because we're waiting on a thunderstorm, right? Yes, we need a thunderstorm and we still need that drip leaf. The two of us spent the night restocking our rockets and doing callbacks. Oh, we have a sixth of a bushel of creepers. Actually, three quarters of, of a, a, a franchise or whatever it is. <laughs> franchise? A corporation of creepers. Yes. Afterwards, we went to a lush cave and took a picture with the drip leaf since Wandy T didn't bring us any. Just go with it. With that done, the mob heads were the only thing between us and completing this challenge. We have everything except for a thunderstorm. It's the one thing holding us back from sweet, sweet sleep. Yep. When's the last time we actually had one? We haven't had one. I know we've had one, but... I think we just haven't been noticing them because we're in the desert, man. Oh. Like, I haven't noticed any rain, to be honest. Wumba brought me out to where he was keeping the mobs and gave me a rundown of the plan. Uh, over here, we have our, our creepers. We'll strike one of those. Over here, we have the skeleton and the creeper. Mm -hmm. And over here, we have the creeper and the zombie. Yep. Here, we have a creeper. But now the tricky thing is we're going to have to have someone go through the nether and end up where this is going to be. All we could do was wait for a thunderstorm. But finally, all of our bad luck during this challenge was balanced out. When just a few minutes later, the sky turned dark. Dude, it's thunder. Wait, wait, wait. Let me test it. Let me test it. Okay, all my, all my stuff is in the chest. Oh my gosh, it's actually thunder. It's really hard to express just how crucial this was. This is, it, this is it, go, go, go. It could be a long time before another thunderstorm, and this late into the run, if we couldn't get all of the mob heads, 19 hours would be completely for nothing. This one moment would basically make or break the challenge. And right away, our plan fell apart. Wait, what? Can you get the trident? Go in slowly in case he's angry with you. Why aren't I picking it up? Oh, it's gotta be me, dang it. You know what, we're gonna, let's improvise. It was truly now or never. My heart was pounding. Oh, nice. Okay, we got the creeper, let's go. Okay, move fast, move fast. Okay. The clock was ticking. Got it. Got it, skeleton's down. Dude, clutch. All that was left was the zombie, and then we'd have the hardest head of all. <sighs> yeah, this is stressful. Okay, got it. in the boat on the zombie. Oh, that spider's getting in my way. Okay, zombie's released, but I almost messed it up. Okay, I tapped the creeper, but he's not listening. Here, come behind the creeper. There you go, there you go. Oh, oh. what? I'm coming back, I'm coming back. Got, got it, it, got it, I got the zombie. Okay, charge the last one. 
and then we'll Let's go. And then it was time. With this last creeper, it looked like if we failed, it would truly be over. Wumba asked me to lure the creeper into a dirt box. Can you lure the creeper for a second? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try. Okay, cool, cool. No, not in there, not in there yet. But it was too late. No! No, no! <sighs> We had to find another creeper. Where is another creeper? No, oh, our time's ticking. Oh, no, dude. We just need one more block. Any you can find, any any creeper you can find, dude. Okay, I see a creeper, I see a yep. creeper. Okay. Got him. Nice, nice, okay. nice, 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 nice. But as I brought the creeper up the hill to prepare to try and get the piglin, the unimaginable happened. Oh no. What's up? Thunderstorm is over. Dude, we have the one creeper. This has to work. So it was all down to this. If we screwed up with this charge creeper, it really would be all for nothing. We set up once more, going over the plan again and again, meticulously, until finally, we were ready. Okay, here it goes. And it's gonna come through any second. There it is. I'm going through. Okay, boat broken. We got it! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Yes! Yes, dude! Love up! Oh. Dude. Oh. dude. Oh, my heart is pounding. That was insane. We got every item in the game, bro. That's just amazing. Let's go back. Let's go back and see it all. All right, let's place this together on the count of three. All right. All right. Yep. One. Three. Two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Three. We're off to say yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Every single block. Thanks for watching. Check out my Patreon for more secret content.